Okay, well, welcome back, those of you that have been hanging in there and anybody who's joined for this um, this uh, session topic area on prototype testing and, and installation. Okay, so the, this topic area is, is prototype installation and testing. Uh, and it, within this award type, the emphasis is really on the prototype testing of the turbine Installation is included um, in the in years past. It was just prototype testing, but we we added the the installation language there uh, to make it clear that uh, that is included in in this um, this award type. So we're we're really here to uh, assess the readiness of the turbine, uh, its ability to become a commercial product. Um, so we 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 identify a baseline turbine design. And that'll be the, the focus uh, of this, this contract. Uh, really, and, and, and we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier um, in some of that, that group discussion there, the questions after the last meeting, but really the expectation here is to, to identify uh, key design questions or issues that really can only be done through uh, testing of the, the full prototype, the full machine. Um, you know, in, in a real world environment. Um, it, it, and it can be, as, as Ian had mentioned, maybe it's just kind of playing around with the controller uh, um, controller settings, but really the idea is this is a, you know, fully ready machine that has the, the potential to um, quickly be on the certification path. Uh, yep, and the project's, uh, project results are expected to lead to a final turbine design that's ready for certification, as we said, and uh, serial production uh, support and increase uh, the number of uh, U.S. manufactured, certified, and, and installed turbines uh, and reduce the, the cost of, of uh, LCOE. So the tasks involved, uh, there's four, four uh, major tasks. First, common deliverable, uh, as usual, the summary of, of work effort. Um, this one we use for communications purposes to develop a, you know, a, a one pager, uh, you know, a fact sheet uh, to let, let everybody know that you are under contract uh, with DOE and, and, the, and CIP, and you've got something new and exciting to contribute to the distributed wind space. Uh, the second, Major task is the design evaluation. Uh, which time there is a go no go no go decision, uh, where we will uh, you know assess the machine. I'll, I'll talk more about the, the design evaluation process. But um, go decision means we continue with the deliverables. No go would be a termination of the contract. Task three point or excuse me four point three is going to be the test specification. So this would be essentially like your, your test plan, uh, what, what you plan to do um, under test uh, of the prototype system, as well as a detailed description of the test site. And I, I'll, I'll discuss more uh, on this in the coming slides as well. The final major task is the, the test report. Um, so this is going to summarize and detail the results of the prototype testing that was completed under this award. The design evaluation, uh, as mentioned, has a go-no, go-no-go decision attached to it. Uh, this is a technical design evaluation. Um, we, we do expect it to be consistent with the standard that OEMs expect to certify the turbine to. So really this needs to be very solid sound engineering. Um, we want to see design specifications, we want to see any modeling, any pre-prototype, testing that may have been done. Um, it, yep, all, all of this is, again, we're gonna kind of harp, harp back on loads. So the de development of the loads must be in a manner that is consistent with the certification planned. Um, so they can be based on measurements of the turbine or aeroelastic modeling. Uh, but if they're based on measurements, we do want some analytical estimation. Uh, and again, very similar with the 
prototype manufacture and install. Um, this, this offering is configuration agnostic, but we still need you know, a very uh, thorough and consistent development of, of the loads so that we can be confident um, in the design of, of, the, of the machine, of the prototype machine. Running through the full set of deliverables, which is mostly the, the tasks that we discussed earlier, but here with the, the timeline attached to it. So the, the first deliverable, the summary of, of work effort is due one month from subcontract execution. The design review is typically scheduled for three months from contract execution. And again, there is a, an NREL request that we receive the design documents and a summary PowerPoint or, or uh, yeah, presentation uh, several weeks ahead of this date, of the, the actual meeting date, so that NREL personnel have sufficient time to, to review, uh, you know, come up with questions or feedback or points for clarification. And that allows us sufficient time to submit those to the subcontractor uh, and allow, allow the subcontractor time to address those in the, the design review meeting. Uh, then one month after uh, determination is provided, a, a go determination is provided to proceed with the prototype testing. Uh, we require the detailed uh, description of tests to be performed, the test plan, essentially, uh, also to include description of the test site, all of the instrumentation that will be used, the data that will be collected, uh, analysis methods or post-processing of the data, uh, and a schedule uh, of testing. And then uh, at the completion of the period of performance, there's the task 4.4, where we're uh, asking for the final reporting document uh, of, of all of the results from the prototype testing. Uh, again, detailing the instrument that was used, the data that was collected, and the analysis methods that were applied to the, the test data to arrive at uh, the test results. And then throughout the contract period of performance, we do again have the quarterly reports. So every three months, there will be a quarterly report uh, that's due starting from the date of contract, contract execution. Now, we, we, these, this doesn't necessarily fall on the yearly, you know, the yearly quarterlies. So um, we, we can try to do that, but it, it is technically from the date of subcontract execution. So just keep that in mind. Then the scoring criteria for prototype installation and, and testing. 35% um, of that criteria comes from the technical approach and readiness. So this is going to be the description of the turbine, all of the turbine features, the turbine system deployment and any testing that has been done uh, prior. Uh, we want, also want to see description of uh, remaining work to have the prototype uh, ready to begin testing. And then again, going back to loads, we, we want to see pr preliminary loads. These don't have to be final, but we want to see a pre preliminary load set uh, that's consistent with uh, standards requirements. And then uh, finally, the, the cost of energy, the, the completed figure of merit. The second start scoring criteria is going to be the proposed test plan. So this would include um, your test location, the test site. Um, you know, if you're if you're planning to partner with maybe a regional test center, that is good, really good information to have, and they can provide really detailed information about their test site. That is. Uh, much appreciated in the proposals. Uh, and then we want to see the test plan, 
and supporting documents uh, of what the tests being conducted, uh, tests are going to, going to be conducted and why. Um, so here's, there's an example listed here about con confirming, uh, you know, the effectiveness, effectiveness of a stall controlled or passive yaw behavior. Um, so yeah, please, please detail uh, what tests are expected to be, to be conducted and, and why they're important at this uh, prototype stage. The third criteria is uh, pretty consistent across most of the award types, and that's the extent to which the turbine will impact the U.S. market. So we want to look at the soundness of the development plan uh, to make sure that the turbine really does have a path to certification for the U.S. market. Uh, we also want to get an estimate of the U.S.-based manufacturing. Again, uh, you know, it's an estimate, but please, we, want, we really do want to see the domestic contribution here as well as the domestic installations uh, in the first year after certification. Please, please make an estimate, uh, your, your, your best estimation for that. And then we have the, the technical and financial capability to uh, see this project through, see this award um, you know, from conception to, to a completion there. Um, and then finally, the financial status uh, documenting the financial status of the, the company. The scoring criteria number four is going to be your, your team your, and your uh, expertise and experience. This accounts for 25%. Um, so here we want to know your past experience, your recent experience, your relevant experience to distributed wind uh, the qualifications of any team members, or if you're, you know, planning to lean on some, some outside experts or contractors, please list um, all of these things. Again, you know, if, if you're working with a regional test center for testing, we, we want the you know, expertise and list of personnel with that group. Uh, resumes for all project team members need to be included. Uh, and then we, we would really want to see a demonstrated ability to complete projects, previous projects on time and, and budget. So the funding for this contract type, this award type is um, $250,000 maximum. There is a price participation uh, of 20 percent uh, minimum. Uh, some recent examples uh, of this award type. Uh, we've got three here. Um, Sonsite wind, uh, which is in the, the lower left figure there, the, the turbine with the tail on it. Uh, then we've got EOCycle America, which is that that's that central figure. That is a downwind dock controlled machine. Um, and then we have XFlow Energy Company, the, the vertical axis machine illustrated uh, on the right side. And of these two, uh, Sonside and XFlow um, have participated in, in, in the past with past awards that have, have really helped shepherd them to this prototype installation and, and testing phase. And that is it. Uh, Jim Truslow, CBC Wind. Hey, Jim. How you doing? Um, my question is, how difficult it is, is it uh, to do your testing uh, uh, not on one of the the locations that you you guys are using. So say say I'm I'm building the unit based on state funds. So uh, the state probably would want to see the unit built in the state. Uh, does that create a, a layer that uh, uh, is hard to overcome? Uh, no, you you don't have to test at um, 
you know, a regional test center or, or any type of, yeah, a test center, uh, you can test at your own site uh, or a site of your choosing. Um, you know, I think what's important here is that it is a site that is, you know, conducive to wind turbine testing, something that, uh, you know, isn't going, going to create difficulties for you, like seasonal variations or really awkward terrain or, you know, building obstructions. Um, Cause we're, we're gonna wanna look at, look at all of that. Uh, and if you can't really test because the site is not a good test site, then it's gonna be hard to, um, it's hard to get a good score, I would say. Okay, that makes sense. I'm, I'm not too worried about uh, having the right, um, we're right on the ocean, so. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yep, of course. Any other? Uh, yeah, I had something, Scott, and thanks for your presentation, by the way. This is Ken Visser from DWT. Um, I was wondering if, uh, if something along the lines, like <clears throat> say we have, well, we have a prototype that, that we're running, or you can call it whatever you want, I guess. Um, that, you know, we are taking data on and, and measuring different kinds of things. But as we look towards moving towards certification, and I guess this is maybe particular to our design or maybe to novel designs where, um, where the typical strategy of, say, getting aeroelastic loads may not be as straightforward because we're not a simple three-bladed design that can use fast or something like that, or we have to um, and we're not quite sure how to do all this yet, but I, I imagine measuring loads may be part of all of this. So let's just look at that aspect of it. <laughs> measuring loads on our unit, if we were to uh, look at that as a prototype installation and test, it's really more a test towards moving towards certification qualification and seeing how our turbine performs. Would that fall under this kind of thing? Would that be a viable um, concept to explore under this bucket, so to speak? Yeah, I, uh, I think I see where you're coming from. So you... I mean, well, I, really... I, can be, I can be a little bit more explicit. We have a ducted turbine design and there's, there's no, you know, simple way to um, yeah. analyze the load. So obviously it seems that at least the further we go with this, it looks like we're gonna have to measure loads at some point, yes. and, and so that means, you know, doing a test with measured loading and seeing what the results are and seeing whether that, whether that matches some sort of model or, you know, um, I was thinking of um, talking to Rick about this and seeing if he would be interested. He's mentioned this before in the Aeroelastic workshop a couple months ago, but would that fall under, under this prototype installation and testing? Because we're really, or I guess we're testing, but we're not, maybe changing things in the design, we're just measuring how it is. Yeah. Yeah. So you, right. I, you're, you're, you're kind of coming in, coming into it with, without any, any real loads basis. Um, uh, I mean, we would, we would want to see, I mean, we would have to really see at least some kind of analytical um, load set and we would, want to know where that came from um you know design specifications for right and, and i've done a whole analytical loads thing on it already i mean that's how we designed and built it but you know that that's still I, that wouldn't fly under a cert test because there's nothing like a fast model we could do or something at least that's my understanding and so you know we have all our analytical loads and then we have even cfd loads and simplified load methods and all kinds of different things even back of the hand calculations to see if we're in the same on the same page but but it's i just got a feeling that it's going to come down to well you need to measure this stuff and especially on the aeroelastic side of the house yeah, um, yeah. you know it, it, and so whether something like that maybe maybe that's more like a validation test in a way i suppose yeah and that that's a big part of load testing right uh, it's to it's to validate your your model right um, so i I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted. Not, you know, I, I, I won't I, hold you to it. I'm just kind of throwing it out on the floor, you know, just yeah. discussion. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I, um, it, it's a really good point to make. I, going on past experience where models do not exist, at least in my experience, and I'm sure Ian has a lot more he could contribute here, but in my experience, um, models did not exist. Uh, things were done at, you know, like a very high fidelity level in CFD. And there was um, a, f a scale, a scaled version of the, of the prototype machine was, was tested and loads were measured. And there was some, you know, collaboration between uh, analytical and the scaled version, which gave a really solid basis for going to, you know, a full scale design for, for uh, uh, prototype testing. But, you know, not everybody can come up with a scale version and test it and measure loads. I mean, that's all pretty expensive. Yeah, well, we're not even bothering with scale testing since, I mean, we have a small turbine, so everything's full scale. So I don't need to, no issues with Reynolds number effects or any of that kind of question coming up. It's just more a matter of um, physically measuring the loads or even determining what loads need to be measured, you know, which is kind of an interesting thing, uh, which we're tossing around too. So I, I don't know. And that's why I thought I, you know, Rick Diamani had brought this up before about his, I mean, his, the word ducted turbines appeared on one of his slides. It just fell, fell over. So I thought, and I haven't chatted with him yet either, but he was kind of interested in coming up with some sort of model for that. And then, well, we have the unit, we could validate that and see if that's a path to move forward you know, because eventually we want to move forward and certifying the turbine. So I just kind of want to, um, you know, head off any of these headaches before we get to them, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, I, I mean, I, me personally, I, I think that, uh, yeah, pr prototype testing and installation is, sounds like that's about where you're at. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Ken, this is Brent. It's, uh, it, when you were speaking, it made me also think of uh, Dean Davis's past experience at uh, Windward Engineering, uh, working with developers of uh, sometimes novel designs and partnering with them to take some uh, loads measurements to validate some of the key assumptions in the design at, at that Windward site. No, definitely. I want to talk to him too. And, uh, you know, from the taking measurements point of view, but I was just, I thought it was quite interesting that Rick had brought up that he was possibly interested in an in analytical modeling of this kind of thing. So, um, yeah. Yep. Anyway, there you go. Yeah, thanks. 20% price participation. Does all money shall be new cash money or some portion could be expected as in kind contribution? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I think this is asking what what qualifies as the to go towards twenty percent um, price participation. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and I'll just copy what. Um, let me go copy what Kendall put in her presentation and dump in the chat just to get things started on that answer uh from yesterday yeah great thanks Brian. Yeah. Uh, i mean it, it's so there are there's a there's a couple of kind of criteria but there's a whole um schedule so a, a whole document that has produced been produced by doe that goes through and indicates what can be used as um as cost share and it does include stuff like um equipment materials so it's not it's not just cash by any stretch. Um, uh, labor that you're putting in, um, and and the schedule right there is 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 there. So if you Google that, you'll get it. It's also available on our website. Um, the the kind of the caveats that um, that are out there that we talked a little bit about yesterday um, is that it has to be expenditures during the contract term. So it can't be something that you spent. Um, 10 years developing this concept and you can take all of that 10 years of work um, and apply it to your cost share. So it has to be something that you are spending now, but you can get creative around that. So um, lab space, your office, um, 
um, even the turbine that you built that you then lease within reasonable bounds to the project or something of that nature. You can use other grants that you get from other entities as cost share, but you can't use other federal funds. So you can't get money from uh, SBIR as an example, and then count that as your cost share towards um, CIP because that's, that, that's federal money. Both of it is federal money. Uh, my question, let's say, if I spent some money within reasonable time, uh, let's say, I sent application, I'm not waiting for approval, and I'm spending some money for, let's say, I bought software, and I was running uh, analysis using the software, and so on. Is it any timeline? Uh, OPIC, let's say, so overseas private investment corporation, they are considering one year before approval of the project, if I've spent direct money for the project, it could be, it's not necessary, but it might be considered as in-kind contribution. Uh, is it any limitation here, let's say, uh, when I can spend, I understand I cannot bring something what I spent 20 years ago, but, no, so so I think it has to be, um, it has to be spent during the contract term. So that's once it's signed um, through the end of the contract. So the year before anything of that nature cannot be used. Now but again, in this case, yeah. it's cash. No, Doesn't no. Matter how, yes. No, no, no. I mean, it, it, it doesn't have to be cash. It could be, I mean, it's labor hours. It could be um, to a degree your space. So leasing costs for your space. And we could talk with Kendall about this specifically, but it could also be you lease the turbine um, if you're doing uh, this example of testing um, or you sell the turbine to the project as an example. So I can sell to myself. If yeah. I have, let's say, to the turbine already developed sitting in my warehouse, I can sell it to myself, correct? Uh, basically, the cost share of the equipment that you are providing to the project is, mm -hmm. is part of the cost share. Okay, thank you. I think there was something in the chat from Jim. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm curious. So once you get to go on task number four, which presumably is at the end of month four, um, what is the anticipated timeline to complete the testing? Um, part of that is is there there will be a uh, you know with your test uh, plan. I mean, there should be a, a layout of a timeline for testing. But I I, guess, I suppose it could be as long as the uh, contract period of performance for. That. Well, that's what I'm basically acting. What, what I mean, obviously, we'd want to do the testing as quickly as we could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the reason I'm asking is because if I do get a state grant to build the unit, I don't. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how long it will take to build and then mm -hmm. install it and then test it. Uh, and obviously, we can outline how long it would take to do all of that in the application. But uh, what is your guys' drop dead? Uh, timeline is there a, or is there one? Uh, so, go ahead. Yeah, I would say there there really isn't one. I mean the the projects that we have, uh, CIP projects themselves, are typically twenty one months in length. Yeah, and and that's kind of the expectation. But if you but we certainly have projects that go over, especially testing ones and ones that engage testing, and that includes certification. Um, because that is dependent on the wind resource. And so um, you, you certainly want to consider where you're, where you're testing based on the resource availability. And, and here at, uh, in Colorado, we get most of our winds over the winter season. So if you, if you get it installed for the winter season here, then you're great because you get all your data. But if you miss your, the winter season, then you're, you're kind of hosed for six months until the next winter season. Um, and so you really need to think about that. 
um, but try to put it within the 21 month time period. Um, and, and then if it, if fate works against us and you don't, then that's not a big deal. And, and what would be considered the minimum time period of, of testing that, that we should perform if, when we're applying for this? I don't think we have a requirement. I mean, the, the key is to, to test what you want tested. Okay. So basically, and, and really what that involves is identifying what type of certification you're going to get uh, and then uh, do the test directed toward what the, that certification requires. Yeah, no, exactly. And, and in this case, if it's, if you're in this kind of prototype testing, what are the things you want to test? Um, what elements of it? Where are you putting it based on the wind resource? And are you going to be able to do those testing that, that the testing of what you want to test in the time periods that you're talking about? So certainly engaging with a testing site or um, someone who has done a lot of testing, if you're planning on testing it at your location, yeah. um, so that you get realistic estimates on, on what that's going to look like. Great. Thank you. Um, let's see. Can you go back to the deliverable slide just for a second, um, Scott? Uh, Joe wanted to look at something there. <clears throat> uh, we thought it mentioned test results. Is that the, uh, the final report? Let's see. Yes. Yeah. The final, report. final report. Yeah. Got it. All right. Cool. Thanks, Joe. And the period, the period of performance is usually 21 months, right? Couple, so we've got some time there. Can we go back to the loads one? I just want to make sure that we close that up. That I think you know it does fit here. Um, I, I know it was kind of a half and half. It depends kind of answer. <laughs> I wanted to, I, you know, I thought it did kind of fit under the scope, you know, you're potentially running an iterative test and it's, you know, part of the validation of the model. Yeah, they're like, you know, to the points made, right, you're gonna need to have a model to validate, right? But if this is a scope surrounding verification of design data inputs, I think that fits. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would agree. Uh, Scott, actually, I did have a question now that you've asked. I was wondering about uh, testing at NREL. I mean, uh, what's involved? I mean, you know, I mean, I, we can test where we're testing right now, which I got a test site here in Potsdam. But, um, you know, with the high winds that you guys get in there, although hopefully not 100 miles an hour, but <laughs> um, is what's involved? Is that an option if we wanted to, like, install a turbine there and test it there and put that in as part of something like this? Yes, as part of CIP. Um, <clears throat> Ian, do you mind? Maybe he left. Um, it, it's it's an option. It is. It really comes down to uh, again our. Uh, we we just we don't want to compete with the private sector. So if there is a, you know, a test entity that can provide what you're looking for, that is our preference. But if that doesn't exist, and NREL really is the uh, the best option for what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, NREL is is an option, yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah, um, I would just echo that. I mean, there are certainly cases in which having stuff done at NREL makes sense. Um, um, I mean, if this is kind of early prototype development, and and you're your goal is not really just to um, to run kind of basic tests or certification or anything of that nature, but you really want to be able to rip the machine apart and and um, start really looking at how the system performs. Then having it done at a in a research setting is different than doing it at a at a test site in Kansas or something. I mean, uh, um, uh, Spanish Forks, Dean Davis's shop is a little bit more in between because he's a he's a um, an engineering firm and so he does a lot more product development type work than if you just 
had it at, at a certification site where they're just going to put it up and run it. And if it breaks, yeah, they'll, they'll do a little bit of maintenance, but they're not going to do any research on it at all. All right. Um, they're just there to test it and that's it. Um, so if you're in this kind of more in the wanting to do research on it, um, then having it at our site or at a place like Dean's site makes more sense and, it, and is justifiable. Yeah, I, right. And I was thinking of Dean's site too. And I guess I was just thinking, you know, there's obviously um, several different things that I kind of want to do research on, but as I kind of mull around this whole loads thing on the path to certification, um, I'm not sure exactly where that falls yet. I mean, it would, it's obviously engineering. It seems like Dean would be great to do that kind of thing, but it's, you know, it is also kind of researchy in a way, but it's kind of developing a, you know, a loads model in a way too. So I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if it's something that you're interested in doing um, again, uh, not to sound like a broken record, but um, engaging now before a solicitation goes out is best. Um, if there is, even when a solicitation goes out, if you want to use NREL facilities, then there is a process we can go through to, um, to put you in touch with someone who can start doing budget estimates and things like that. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, obviously, what would be the best location to do something like this. And then, um, you know, uh, examine that as a possibility. Mm 